Based Gaming. Okay, Hassan Piker, the socialist Twitch streamer who has gotten a lot of success lately. He got in trouble for purchasing a pretty expensive house in California, and like most things that come out of the commentary community, everyone basically completely botched up the criticism of him to the point where the actual circumstances surrounding the criticism are more interesting to me than the actual criticism itself. But for starters, let's get a pretty quick history lesson on this because this is not the first time a leftist creator has been criticized for this type of thing. I think earlier this year, Nico Lull got a similar criticism for purchasing, I think it was a $2 million house with the money that she made from Twitch streaming. And once again, because she was a socialist or a very outspoken leftist, she too received criticism similar to what Hassan is getting now over the same thing. The general idea is that both her and Hassan are hypocrites because they are indulging in wealth that they criticize other people for having. Another aspect of this is that it's also really awkward for them to stand and say that they fight for the working class, but then also they are very clearly not in the working class class that they claim to be fighting for. And to be honest, at face value, it kind of makes sense. Like, I can see why people would be frustrated with them or why they would make the accusation, but I feel like in practice, it is kind of a silly thing to say. Like, I think there are some huge aspects to this criticism of them that, that kind of misses the bigger point, in a sense. Like, both of them are pretty adamant about introducing socialism into the United States. And at least, I don't know about Nikola, but I know for Hassan, he is a very big proponent of working within the system to introduce socialism over time. And the reality of having a position like that is that if you want to get anything done, you need to have some level of wealth. If you're choosing to adapt within this current system, you need to have the money to back it up. Because at the end of the day, politics is a big money game. Like, the reason why a lot of these larger corporations are even able to lobby policies that they want is because they have shit tons of money to funnel into politicians to do their bidding for them. So the fact that they're able to buy these very expensive homes, which are also in very expensive housing markets by the way, but we'll get into that in a second, is more or less actually a good thing for their audience if they believe in the cause that they're fighting for. Because it demonstrates that they are at least on a financial level where they are somewhat capable of possibly possibly contributing toward moving their cause in a more meaningful way than just Twitch streaming. Because right now, all they can really do is try to influence the votes of a very small minority of people compared to the actual voting base in these elections. But it is something. It is some influence, and it is some way to use it in an effective way. And it's for these reasons that I feel like the criticism of them that they're buying very expensive houses is really, honestly, just a big flop in general. Like, it really just falls short of even saying anything meaningful about their current positions. All it amounts to are people being very confused about the housing market and just making wild accusations that they're not allowed to have money. It really sours the argument overall, and it really makes people who are actually trying to give meaningful criticisms of them look kind of stupid because you're being lumped in with just a group of very angry commentators who are calling them fake socialists on very little basis. So like most things that come out of this community, it's all one big clusterfuck. But, and that's the big two buns, there is another layer to this. There is the interesting underside to this whole criticism, to this whole debate, that I find way more fascinating than any of what we just talked about. See, here's the thing about these Twitch streamers and the way they're going about their ideas. A lot of these guys are really charismatic and they're very good about pointing out a lot of obvious problems that we're all noticing today. Like, I don't think anyone would disagree with them when they say that homelessness and shit is a problem. But where it starts to get dicey for me is that a lot of their execution of their advanced plans on how to fix these things seems to consist of them only existing on Twitch and accumulating enough wealth over enough time to to eventually do something about it. Which I feel is a really gross misuse of their time. Like for how large some of these guys become, the sheer inactivity of their platforms beyond just growing themselves out more is kind of something that I feel like should be talked about more, or at least should be addressed from them at some point. Like here's the thing, it's great at all that they're able to move to a new house and all that shit, but it's kind of like it's just an investment
investment in themselves and only themselves. Like yeah, they're in their own house, and yeah, it's great that they get to own their own place, but as far as furthering what they're trying to work toward, as far as furthering their political goals, they aren't really doing anything besides just shitting out a bunch of money to live in a new location to continue doing what they were already doing in their old location. In a sense, they're kind of resetting their progress, because money that could have been funneled into things that could have furthered their cause, that could have been funded into gatherings and shit like that, is being funneled into themselves. Now there are obvious counters to this, like how I'm being a bit presumptuous with how they're supposed to be using their money, and that's fair, definitely. But the core idea that I want to get at with all of this, that I want to at least expose with these arguments, is this kind of question of, if they're so adamant about the country moving in a certain direction, if they're so interested and passionate about these changes happening, that they would go out and start campaigning for politicians, that they would try to influence the vote, why aren't they doing more than just sitting on Twitch streaming? We already know it's possible. We already know that people on the internet are able to mobilize and make change. Like Destiny of all people was in a situation where he had people coming out to a fan meetup in Georgia and actually doing door to door campaigning. Now that's very small in the grand scheme of things, but it's something. It's sort of a proof of concept that you can get people to mobilize with your platforms. And the way these leftist Twitch streamers are doing it, where they kind of use this like so he can see politics, is not effective in that regard. And it also supposes that we assume that they are going to do something with their money in the future at all. Like, the idea that they're going to introduce socialism in the long run is like, how long is the long run? Like, where is the end goal? When does it stop? Like, when can we expect them to do something? Like, in that argument I mentioned earlier where I'm being presumptuous about how they're supposed to use their money. Like, how- you can basically give that for as long as you want. Like, if Hassan is doing nothing new in the next 20 years besides doing the same streaming bit he's been doing now, then you can easily just make excuses like, like, oh, well, he just doesn't have the resources, or, oh, who are you to say what he does and doesn't do with his money? And in a sense, it would still be fair, but I also feel like it's fair for people who are following them for this sort of hope in the future, this sort of thing that they appear to be fighting for, that they've been trying to influence so many people to agree with them on, to have some expectations that they would maybe do something different, or at least something about it, besides just doing the same thing they've always been doing. Because right now, all they are are just a bunch of glorified hype men that are giving money to the billionaires that they are trying to dethrone. And this sort of extends to another issue that I've had with online politics as a whole. A lot of it feels like a bunch of open discussions about problems, but no actual effort to mobilize and solve those problems. Like there's no actual plan here, just very vague discussions about a quote unquote plan that will come into fruition at an unknown date. And then to top it off, there are just a bunch of what feel like really fruitless debates with random people on the internet about really bizarre topics that don't feel like they're really going anywhere. Like, at least you can feel smart when you argue with some dipshit who's a Nazi on the internet. But I don't know how that epic gamer ponage of them really amounts to anything of value. I mean, it is entertaining, and maybe you can get some more people in your audience from that, but <laughs> I mean, if you're arguing about a bunch of wild shit that doesn't feel like it has any correlation to reality, or maybe your position may not be as well thought out as you'd like it to be, but because of your brand, you have to appear like you're always right and you're very confident. You start running into the situations where maybe these debates where you're trying really hard to look good and bring people to your side aren't actually doing that and may actually be hurting you. I know Vaj is getting a lot of that because he's been getting a lot of shit lately. Like if your end game here is to grow your audience enough for these long term changes to take place, then how are these dumb philosophical shouting matches on the internet really contributing to that? How is making yourself look silly online, getting people to criticize you and fuck your image, actually contributing to any meaningful change. Like, doesn't that hurt you in the long run? Like, won't that be used against you by political opponents who want to slander people that you try to back? It all seems really counterintuitive. I, I will readily admit that I don't get it all and I don't have all the, uh, the answers here, so I guess I'll just leave it off at that. Are the criticisms against Hassan valid? Yes and no. No in the sense that people are criticizing him over something that's fucking stupid, but yes in the sense that the underlying criticisms and the ideas surrounding him and his community are very important and should definitely be discussed. And with that, I will leave you off with some very powerful clips from the political community. Goodbye. Like if I were to go up to someone who's like, oh, that dude, he's a Nazi, he's a pedophile, he's a child abuser, he's a clown. Okay, Somebody so, would probably okay. look at that and go like, well, what the fuck is wrong with clowns? 
clowns. You'd be like, well, nothing's wrong with the clowns. I just decided to list it alongside all those other negative traits. But I think that most people have subscribed to the idea that truth means something that can be empirically verified. If a person disagreed with that, I would have to kill them. So that QAnon guy who believes that the Jews have it, I would say, if when disabused of his belief that the Jews had the conspiracy, he immediately released the need to cleanse the ethno state. I would not actually call that person a racist. I would, and, and trying to step into their mind, I would go, this person's trying to save the fucking world. This is a goddamn hero who's very confused. You have found equivalences to lead you to the conclusion that actually there's nothing wrong with holding child pornography because you know what? You're actually having computers from the middle of Central Africa. Therefore, I can say a sociopathic, completely antisocial, fucking anti-human thing, okay. and it fucking all the works out. Is that what meaning means to you? Is that what meaning means to you? You lost, Vosh. You lost. It's a wrap. I won Vosh's chat. I just beat your fucking daddy. How does it feel? How does it feel? How does it feel? Infrared is rising. How does it feel? Tell me how it feels, Vosh.